Uh, approval of the minutes would be the first item on the agenda. If I can get someone to, you've already had, you you should have had time to review them. Wait for me. <laughs> I move approval. Second. Second. Okay. Moving in second in. Uh, all those in favor is uh, accepting the minutes as uh, presented in your materials. Indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, same sign. All right, minutes approved. Okay, Christina. So the next thing on our agenda, um, of course, we still have three board vacancies. One for a dentist, one for a medical doctor and one for a mental health practitioner. I know there was a group that came together and recommended uh, Dr. Legler and Dr. Superman. There's a loud buzzing. There's a loud buzzing. There we go. Um, Short of quorum when they call the vote, we got to say that. So I don't know if uh, we have anyone who you know, wants to discuss those those applications, wants to make a recommendation, a motion for me to move this towards the city council. Well, I'll, I'll speak up since I know both of them and have spoken to them on multiple occasions uh, 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 about that. Um, uh, Dr. Suchman's a, a local dentist. His father was a dentist here forever. He lives in Lee Summit, but with our changes in the uh, rules and regulations, uh, because his practice is in independence and he's very willing to participate, um, he's actually... Uh, he's been teaming up with Marcy at Walmart. She, I think she's got. Sorry. It's all right. That he was, uh, he he's good. very anxious to to be to come on board uh, and to see what he can do to uh, uh, help with uh, uh, healthcare uh, in uh, Independence. Uh, Dr. Legler uh, practiced in Independence for his entire career. Uh, his office was out in Susquehanna. I've known him for 40 years or so. Uh, as a family physician, he saw it all, uh, was on the hospital staffs for many, many years until they quit going to hospitals because of the invention of hospitalists. Uh, I believe he was actually on the board in the past. It was before my time and before Christina's time, and uh, but he was. Uh, according to him, uh, and uh, so he's familiar with uh, what the advisory board does and can do. Uh, his wife is inter is a, a nurse, longtime nurse in Independence, and uh, is actually a volunteer with the uh, Jackson County Health Department. So uh, we'll, we'll have a little crossover with that, but I don't I don't see that as being an issue. I see that as being a benefit. So. I would certainly encourage the advisory board to pass their applications on to the city council for approval. Christina, do you need a, a motion on that or just a recommendation? I think a recommendation is enough as long as there's um, okay. no one who dissents. <laughs> if they do, I might have to come, come and visit them. <laughs> Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a discussion of the COVID-19 outbreak and where we are. I mean, I can tell you right now, um, from the health department point of view, um, we are seeing cases go back up. Um, we are seeing hospitalizations uh, slowly climb. Hopefully Dr. Nelson will be able to jump on. Um, my understanding right now is hospitalizations are still at a low enough number that the hospitals are able to handle them. However, they are definitely seeing an increase in numbers. Um, we're seeing an increase in the number of cases being reported to us. And we all, having talked to other health departments in the area, we all believe that it's highly underreported because 
um, the vast majority of cases we know about as just people are ones that are taken with home test kits and never mm. reported to anyone. Um, so we know that there's more out there. Um, we know that we're seeing an increase in the number of cases among city staff. Um, the good news is the majority of these cases are not as serious um, as they have been in the past. So um, that's good, uh, but it would be even better if they were lower. So I don't know if Dr. M Morris, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I think the interesting thing about this, and I may send everybody an article that was in, uh, again, it was in the New York Times a couple of days ago. It's uh, an article on why masks work and why mask mandates didn't work. It's a really nice article written by a non-medical person, but I've sent it to dozens of people saying, duh, you know, th this is what our dilemma was. I think the other interesting thing we're seeing is, is I personally have more friends that have had COVID now since it became an endemic disease than when it was a pandemic disease. And it's because of this concept of it's gone, we don't have to wear masks in the, under any situation. So I think one of the interesting things that a health department has to look at is how can we help educate people on when wearing a mask is a good idea. Um, I'll pop on a mask if I'm in some big, if I'm in Lowe's shopping for something and it's not seven o'clock in the morning and there's a lot of people in there, sometimes I'll put on a mask. Um, I've got other reasons to wear a mask anyway, so I'm, I'm probably more of a masker than other folks. The other thing that I think the health department has a role in, although I don't know where we where we fit with this is the increase in long COVID symptoms. Um, uh, that's been a fascinating disease uh, and we're starting to see it in people that got it with their second or third episode of COVID. That they had relatively mild symptoms, but they can't taste anything now. And so they, you know, we're seeing symptoms that don't put them in the ICU, but maybe lifelong complications of a disease that is still sort of preventable. But anyway, just interesting concepts of things we have to look at in the future. You know, Dr. Morris, I'm not sure I will uh, uh, not wear a uh, mask when I'm in an airport again. Um, that's I've heard more folks still who are flying um, and maybe when they're in the in the plane, uh, the filtration systems are good enough, but I'm not sure the problem is when they're not waiting to board their plane at the gate. <laughs> yep, it's it's those mass ca cases and uh, I was shopping the other day and, and I swear the I swear lady who was coughing followed me everywhere I went in the store. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to turn around and I say, where are you going next? Because I want to go over here. Over here. <laughs> hey, Jason here. My, Dr. Morris, might you send that article? That sounds like written at a level that, that maybe, maybe policy makers might makers find right. some value on it that are, are non-medical, non-scientific, and, and it's been difficult to grasp some of the some problems, of the problems that we'll face. My other comment would be, Christina, do do we do we need to ponder uh, uh, authorities and such in relationship to what you need to be able to do uh, as as the public health department? I, I I'm not up on the the law of a year ago and the whole county court case, uh, but are are you comfortable that, that none of your inherent policy or authorities have been diminished because of this? And is that something we need to converse about in order to bring issues to life recommendations forward? So I guess I will say, I don't think there's a health department in the state that's wholly comfortable right now. However, we've been on, um, we've had discussions with our, our legal team and we'll continue doing so um, as things seem to shift some with the state. Um, 
um, the state was made aware this week that there are many of us who have who, um, uh, would like some more more direction from the state about what they're they're requesting from us in our pounds. So we're all working on that. So uh, next item. Sorry, Jason. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that thank you, and and that background's not being not being. Uh, discussion on mental health co-responder program, Christina. So um, I just wanted to give a quick update. Uh, we are continuing on with the mental health co-responder program. Um, we are looking to go ahead and, you know, make sure that we have a vehicle available uh, for the team. I know comprehensive is moving ahead with their uh, crisis intervention center there near where the old MCI used to be and where the utility center is now um, at one of their buildings there. So they're making strides to make sure that um, everything is ready to get started uh, and looking for a soft rollout probably, well, within the next month um, is the hope. Um, getting a social worker on board is one of um, the biggest issues because the mental, you know, getting a mental health practitioner hired, um, they're in very short supply right now. Uh, so we've been working with Comprehensive on that and uh, possibly some other groups in the area just to have that pilot program be able to get up and running so that we can iron out any wrinkles. Um, but I mean, I'm really excited about it and I'm really hoping that things will go well. Um, John Burrell, who's been working on this program, he's phenomenal and he's a believer so um, he is excited to get going and there's a lot of support right now. So we really, really want to get moving on it and make sure that we can get that ball rolling while the support's still there so we can show uh, how wonderful it is and what a good asset it will be for our community. So I just wanted to let you guys know that is still happening. Um, they're getting the last of their ducks in a row to get started. Dr. Reddy, I think you're muted again. I know the state has got an initiative to make um, mental health um, kind of emergency situation for adolescents available throughout the state. Um, it's more of a court, it, it, it's through the, the, the court system um, that's that's pushing this. Are you aware of those uh, intervention centers that they're trying to make available throughout the state? No, I have to assume Julie is. Um, but I know, I mean, where Dr. Legler, I believe, used to have his practice, of course, Comprehensive took over for their youth um, program. Um, I know Julie has brought up all the things that the state's doing, and the state is pouring a lot of money towards mental health right now, which is a real boon. Um, and very needed. Uh, but no, I was not aware about specific crisis centers for teens. I, I might do a little more work on this. I'm aware of those. It would be a resource available in the Kansas City region, but it would be good for this group to know, have more awareness of that, particularly um, promoting the idea that if folks don't know where to turn, here's, here's an avenue. So let, I'll, I'll work on that um, and share that with you. And if it's of interest, we can share that at our next meeting because I know they're trying to stand those up now. Um, anything else on the agenda, Christina, that we need to? So uh, before we adjourn, so walk us through the um, approval process. How soon will Dr. Legler and Suchman be part of our of our team? So I believe the next council meeting is this coming Monday. However, I have missed the deadline for getting um, anything on the agenda. The deadline was last Friday, so we missed that. 
So it would be two weeks from Monday, which if I were smart enough to be able to tell you what that date is, I could. Um, apparently it's the 20th. So if they vote on it on the 20th, honestly, uh, I mean, they would become a board member, I believe, that next morning. Okay. Um, our next regularly scheduled meeting would be August. So we could make sure that all their paperwork is done and they were ready to join us um, that first meeting in August. Okay. Which I Thank believe you. is August 4th. Okay. Do you have anything else for the good of the order? If that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say you indicate by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Hey, folks, sorry for being late. Thank you. Thank you.